Okay, this is a teardown review of the UNIT UT203 clamping multimeter. Now, uh, this is a bit of a specialty multimeter. Uh, it is, like most multimeters, it does multiple functions. There's a, obviously a voltage range here. Uh, you can measure resistance. There's a continuity and diode checker. Uh, there's actually a frequency uh, counter in this as well. But more importantly, uh, this meter has uh, a 40 amp and a 400 amp uh, range for measuring both uh, AC and DC current. Now, you might ask yourself, when would you need such capabilities? Uh, it basically, in time, uh, high currents occur. Uh, if you're doing um, solar power panel work, uh, doing a lot of battery work where you're charging a big battery. Um, also, it really shows up a lot when you're doing uh, AC electric work. That's sort of a safety thing. It's much easier to clamp around a conductor. Now, this particular unit's only a uh, Cat 3 300 volt unit, so it really uh, would be rather inappropriate for most high power, high voltage uh, current situations in the AC domain, that really is the domain of a higher end meter. However, uh, more than adequate for uh, measuring high currents in a low voltage uh, situations. So, first we'll uh, take a quick look at uh, its measurement capabilities and then we'll focus on the teardown and see how it's constructed. Okay, so the first thing to look at in this meter is uh, its current measuring capabilities because that's what's special about it. Simple setup here for measuring uh, DC currents. I have a DC power supply. I have a fluke meter, which I trust, uh, also providing a readout for the current. So this one has a current meter. This one has a current meter. And of course, the uh, UNIT has a current meter. I have looped, of course, the wire through the jaws. That's how these things work. It's on the 40 amp range. And right now you can see there's no current flowing through the circuit, but the uh, UNIT thinks there's a current. Now, it's not broken by any means. This is exactly how these work. Uh, they work by measuring a magnetic field. And any sort of residual magnetism in the jaws can produce uh, false readings. And that's why these always will come with a zeroing button or a relative button. This one's called rel. And you can see that it goes to zero, uh, zero amps once I press the button. Now, I'll turn the meter on. Pardon me, I'll turn the power supply on. And uh, the meter on supply will tell me that it's running. Let's, let's start at one amp. And this thing will actually settle down at 1.0, one amp even. Okay, good. The fluke's running at 98 milliamps. And uh, the... UNIT is recording a 1.0, 1 1 .0 amp. Ah, super, well, that's actually quite, that's quite good. Um, it's supposed to be only accurate to plus or minus 2% plus uh, 5 counts. So um, that's quite admirable, actually. It's fairly hard to measure low DC currents accurately. If you want a really super accurate one, you have to get into the, uh, the Tektronix range for several thousand dollars. So that's good. Um, let's move up to 5 amps, which is, just happens to be the, uh, the current uh, limit of this power supply. Um, so the power supply is settled down at 4.999 4 amps, uh, the, the fluke meter agrees, and uh, the UNIT says it's 5.16 amps, so uh, now f 5 amps plus or minus 2% should be about 5.125, so this one might be recording a little bit high, but one thing I have to also have to recall, of course, is that all these meters here have an accuracy, so even, these two, even though these two meters agree, that doesn't mean this could be 5 amps because everything has air bounds on it. So this actually is performing 5.12. Good. This is actually looking pretty decent, actually. Now, I will record, mentally record that this meter seems to be showing a slightly higher current than the fluke meter. So if I'm ever doing mixed mode measurements where sometimes I switch between a clamp-on technique or uh, using the ammeter inside this multimeter, I'll make sure I record that. Okay, so when you buy a new meter, you should really make sure that it's actually accurate before you put it in service uh, in your workshop. And of course, how do you do that? Well, you need a reference source. Now, uh, traditional reference sources can be tremendously expensive, as you wouldn't expect. However, uh, there is an individual in the States here who produces a uh, product called the DMM Check. And uh, you can actually, if you zoom into that little text there, it takes you to a URL where I'll sell you one for a, a tremendously reasonable price. Um, and this will allow me to, uh, to measure uh, the current voltage and resistance uh, uh, once only one data point but fairly accurately and it'll give me a good understanding whether or not the meter as I've received it is actually uh, reasonably in Cal. Okay well the first test is voltage. Uh, the DMM check produces a very accurate 5 volts and you can see uh, indeed uh, it's actually recording 5.00 volts. Wonderful. Okay the next mode I'm in now is uh, ohms. There's actually three very precise resistors here and they should add up to relatively 111.1 kilo ohms. And uh, well, look at that, wonderful. So uh, again, looks like the resistance range out of box is accurate. 
And the last thing to check here is there is a, a, a continuity mode. And of course, when you short your leads together, it should be. And, and you can hear it can. Now, what's really good is actually this one's very sensitive. Even the slightest indication of continuity in the meter beeps. So that's great, actually. That's a, a feature you really want to look for when you uh, are doing continuity beeping testing. You don't want a slow meter that takes a long time to register whether or not uh, continuity has been achieved. Okay, a few cursory tests just to make sure the meter, as I received it, was reasonably accurate uh, in the spec, and sure, sure enough it is. That's not a really big surprise, it doesn't matter how cheap of a meter I seem to tear down, uh, they're always well within their specs, and that's really because a lot of the accuracy of uh, any multimeter is heavily determined by the integrated circuit, which provides all the measurement functions, and uh, those particular ICs uh, have gotten very good, and they have been good for many years and uh, out of box accuracy is fine in the meter. So the real next questions in a meter are um, durability uh, and safety. Uh, and that's the other two things that uh, sometimes get compromised uh, at a low price. Okay, so uh, physical ruggedness is sort of the next question. Now I've always thought it a bit unfair. Some people buy some very inexpensive meters and they drop them onto concrete floors and they complain that uh, they fall apart. I mean, that's one thing you have to compromise with when you spend less money on a meter. Um, it used to be that meters were very scientific instruments. Well, heck, they still are. Um, what you're doing, dropping it on the floor and expecting to survive. Now, as you go up in the price range, yes, the meters start to come very, very rugged, like a fluke. Uh, you sure can drop it, but um, I always thought that was a bit unfair. I mean, as long as you're careful, uh, that's not really a concern. Now, this meter is a little bit different. This is an inexpensive meter. However, it's meant to hang onto wires. And in a typical installation, uh, you actually would expect to be hanging in a wire, and unfortunately, sometimes slipping down off the wire and uh, falling onto the floor. So, um, there is actually is an argument, I think, here that you should check for ruggedness and expect at least a reasonable amount of ruggedness out of a meter. Now, uh, if you twist the body, that's your first indication whether or not it's a, a strongly built product. Um, and it feels quite good, actually, surprisingly good. Uh, the jaws are nice and big, the spring return is nice and strong. Uh, the jaws have some sort of uh, feature here, so they tend to mate uh, correctly. They don't seem to want to be... You can't t uh, torque them, so they want to mismate, they snap back in. So, just cursory inspections on, on the front of the meter, it says this is actually looking you know, pretty promising, actually. Okay, so uh, the battery compartment in the back is fastened with a screw. That's good to see. That's the first indication that actually if you drop this thing, it wouldn't fall apart. Uh, the power supply battery is, um, wow, look at that, branded by Unity. Uh, you know you're getting big in life when you can actually get your own custom branded batteries. Okay, obviously the meter's opened up here. Uh, what we have here are the uh, input jacks. Now, promising, they're actually not soldered directly to a circuit board, but they go through a wire. That's the mechanically superior way of doing it. It prevents solder fractures, because you obviously got a lot of mechanical stress in your leads. One thing I do always look for, though, in a meter, I can see that, obviously, there's no uh, stop to the uh, banana plugs. So, I always worry about foreign ingestion. If I drop something conductive into my meter, a barrel, Will it contaminate, get in the meter and cause some damage, or uh, worse? Now, I can't see on the moldings here uh, tremendous provisions for foreign object ingestion, so um, I always worry about that, so that's one thing to look at. Otherwise, it's two circuit boards. Uh, there's a circuit board on top here and the circuit board bottom. Uh, looks like there's a spring here, and that goes to some shielding on the meter. Uh, that's good, except that the... Um, the shielding's been covered up by some non-conductive plastic, so I'm um, <clears throat> not entirely sure what the point of shielding is if you uh, prevent the shielding from being conductive, so uh, perhaps that springs for some other different reason. Uh, down here on the um, very bottom, of course, is uh, the primary measurement capabilities of the instrument. It's a chip on board. Uh, we have, of course, the crystal that goes with it. There's always a microprocessor in these. And uh, then we have some precision resistors, it looks like, here. And the daughter card here um, is, is entirely associated with the this ribbon cable. You can see a, a, a polyamide uh, ribbon cable coming in. There's going to be a couple of Hall effect sensors up here. And this is basically... Uh, doing all of the conversion of magnetic flux to uh, to a voltage. And you can see there's a tremendous number of uh, pots you can use to actually um, adjust the meter's accuracy. Now there's no instructions, of course, in the manual on how to do that. 
Okay, so one thing I always look at uh, when I buy some new test and measurement equipment is the quality of the soldering. Uh, that tells you actually a lot about uh, the quality of the product often. Um, things which are machine soldered, uh, which don't have a lot of human intervention, of course, tend to be more reliable because it's a more repeatable process. Um, I zoomed in here and uh, you can see that uh, it's, uh, of course, a surface mount construction. More importantly, as you sort of look around at the solder, you can see that, of course, it's all been uh, machine placed and uh, machine soldered. I actually tore down a current probe recently, which actually was assembled by hand, which kind of blew me away. Uh, but this one uh, is actually done to a, clearly a high standard, um, and then when I put the uh, solder joints under a, a microscope to inspect them even more closely, um, I was doubly happy with this. This has actually been uh, well put together, so clearly uh, UNIT has some uh, really decent manufacturing capabilities at least. Okay, well I didn't pay a lot of money for this unit. It came from a company called Deal Extreme. They seem to be sort of an importer uh, in, this, in uh, the Americas here. I think they deliver into Australia as well. Um, build quality of the circuit boards is uh, is good actually. Uh, nice clean solder joints, nice clean placements, uh, no bodges on the board. Uh, the power, the jacks here are okay. I would have liked to see them closed up quite frankly rather than being open like that, but uh, the jaws are uh, fairly solid. Um, they're not uh, super incredible solid. I think uh, it's only hard by one screw here. But uh, sort of within any what I would consider reasonable abuse, uh, I would think this thing would actually survive well. Okay, what's in the box? So it came with a nice uh, cardboard box on the outside and uh, a very nice carrying case. There's of course the meter itself. Uh, there's a set of leads which are um, they're fine actually. They're, they're decent leads. They're obviously not uh, top of the line, but then again we're talking about a product which is only uh, a, a Cat 2 product, or a Cat, it's a Cat 2, it's 300 volts, so um, they're actually rated Cat 1, 1000 volts, Cat 2, 600 volts, so uh, the ratings are marked higher than the meter, uh, that's important, your leads have to be as good as your meter. There's a manual, uh, now uh, it is not translated to English, so you have to pick through it to uh, figure out uh, some of the modes. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and there's actually a warranty card, uh, which uh, strangely enough actually does have English on it, so I'm not entirely sure why well, they chose to translate the warranty card, but not the user manual. But um, there you have it. Okay, that's the uh, UNIT UT203.